Hello and welcome to another hands-on lesson. In this one, I'm gonna show you a really cool tool called the AWS Cloud Development Kit, also known as the AWS CDK. So what is the CDK? It enables you to build apps in the cloud using standard programming languages. So it supports some languages that many developers will understand from inside or outside of the cloud world, such as TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Java, C Sharp, .NET, and Go. You can use these languages to create reusable constructs. That's the terminology. As you can see on the right-hand side, we have an app. Within that, we have a stack. And then within that, we have constructs. And then within those constructs, you can see individual components or components of the actual application stack itself. Now, in the bottom, you can see that there's CloudFormation and a CloudFormation template. So what's happening is when you're using languages like Python or Java, to define what you want to build, then AWS will build out the CloudFormation template and use CloudFormation to deploy your stack. So you compose your constructs into stacks and then applications or apps. It's a command line toolkit. So you can use some fairly simple commands to actually build all of this out. And the terminology for what it actually does in terms of creating that CloudFormation template is known as synthesizing. So it synthesizes the templates for you based on the code that you've actually used and that's written in one of those languages that's supported by the CDK. So that's it for the overview. We're gonna go in and do a hands-on. We're gonna build a demo application using the cloud deployment kit. So in the course download, go into the AWS CDK folder and you're gonna find a series of documents. The first one you need to open is the .md file known as cdk-serverless-app. So in here, we've got some fairly detailed instructions. We're gonna walk through these instructions and build out our application using CDK. And this application is gonna include several different services, including Lambda functions and API gateway. So to get started, we need to simply create a directory called my widget service, change into it, we're gonna run the cdk init command using the language specified as Python. Then we're going to specify a variable for the source and we're going to pip install this requirements document. So let's go ahead and do all this. Now I'm gonna do all of these commands, everything that's on this page here using AWS Cloud Shell. So I'm in Cloud Shell in North Virginia. I'm gonna run the first command, change into the directory I've just created run the CDK in it using the language as Python. And we can see this is already starting to create some components or some configuration for our application. So what I can do now, if I just clear the screen so we can actually bring the cursor back up to the beginning, let's have a look at what's in here. So just by running that command, we've now got an app in the Python document here. We've got the CDK.json. We've got a folder called my widget service. And then we've got some text files and an MD file. The next command on line seven is to run the source command, specify that. And then next we're gonna run pip install dash r requirements.txt. Okay, so those all ran successfully. Next is we need to run the app and note that it synthesizes an empty stack. So we'll see what that means. We wanna run this command cdk synth. So again, I'll clear my screen, run cdk synth, and that completed successfully. This is what I expected to see. Next, we're gonna make a directory called resources, and then we're gonna create a file called widgets.js in the resources directory. And we're going to take the code from this first file, widgets.js, let me just move that left. So this is the file, not widgets lambda, widgets.js. So let's make the directory called resources. Now I'm not gonna change into that directory. I am just going to create a file called widgets.js in that directory. So let's call that widgets.js. Okay, sometimes you have to actually install nano, so let me just go ahead and do that. sudo yum install nano. Okay, that's done. Let me clear that screen again. And then we'll rerun the command to create the widgets.js file in the resources directory. Then I have to copy all of the code from widgets.js in the course download, paste it all in, confirm and paste, and then I can save my file. Okay, that's done. We've got to do something similar now by creating a file called widgetservice.py in the my widget service directory. And we're going to add in the information in the widgetservice.py file. So let's run sudo nano, and I'm going to use the file name. So remember this is in the my widget service directory and it's called widgetservice.py. Then you can copy all of the code from this file in the course download, paste that in, and then let's go ahead and save that file. Again, we want to run this command to check that it still synthesizes an empty stack. 
So we run the CDK synth command, and we should see an output very much the same as we saw before. Okay, that all looks good. Let's move on. The next thing to do is we need to edit the my widget service, my widget service stack.py file. So what we need to do is we need to add some code in and replace a bit of code. So let's open the file first. So I'm going to edit it with nano again. Let's put in that file name. This is the file. So what we need to do is we need to copy this from .import widget service statement. And we need to put it directly under where it says from constructs import construct. So back in the file here, this is where I want it to be. I'm going to give it a new line and just paste that one in. Next, we need to replace the first comment in red towards the bottom of the file with this code. Okay, so copy the entire line, including that spacing in the beginning, so we get the correct indentation. Let's come back to the file, and we should be able to just backspace this code out the way, and then let's put this one in, and then we'll save this file. Again, we're going to run CDK synth to make sure it still synthesizes the stack. So let's rerun that command. Now, if there are any editing issues, you're going to find out now. So if you put any of that code in the wrong place, you're going to get some feedback right from this command. All right, mine looks good. The next thing to do is bootstrap the AWS environment. So this is going to start creating some resources. This is what we need. We need to run CDK bootstrap AWS colon slash slash. Then it's the account number. Then it's the region. So again, I'll clear my screen. Just bring this cursor down the middle. Firstly, I need my account number paste that in and my region is US East 1. Let's press enter and see what happens. So we can see that it's starting to create the deployment and there's lots of feedback in the console here. You can see a CloudFormation stack is being created. So let's go over and look in CloudFormation and see what's happening. Of course, we can see it here as well. We can see a stack, we can see roles, we can see an S3 bucket and so on. So let's just open CloudFormation. And in CloudFormation, we can see the CDK toolkit is being created. And of course, you can go into events and see what's going on here. And it didn't take long and it has completed. And we can see that it says here, this is a positive response. It says creating CloudFormation change set and then environment, and it gives the account number and region is bootstrapped. So that's good. The next thing to do is run this simple command CDK deploy. So let's run this command and this is going to deploy our application. And it's asking to confirm that I want to deploy these changes and we can see what's going to be created. So there's quite a bit of information here and we'll go through it in the console shortly as well. So let's click on yes or Y, press enter, and it's going to start deploying. And again, we can see that it's creating a CloudFormation change set. So lots of this is going to be built out through CloudFormation. Let's head back to CloudFormation. Let's have a look at what's going on. Now we've got my widget service stack being created. And again, of course, we can go and have a look in the console here at what is being created. And that has completed successfully. And in this case, we get this output here. And you can see a URL. I'm going to copy this URL. And we're going to use the curl command to execute this URL. I'll clear the screen so it's a bit easier to see. And let's run curl dash x get. And then let's put in the execution URL for the API. Now, what you get as a response is this little bit at the beginning here. So we see widgets. Now we haven't created any widgets. We can't create or delete widgets at this point, but we're going to create another component of the application that's going to do that now. So the next phase is to create the Lambda functions that allow us to create, show, and delete widgets. So what we need to do, first, we've got to replace the code in widgets.js in the resources directory with the code from widgets-lambda. So back on my command line, I'm simply going to delete the file. Let's go to resources and widgets.js and delete that file. And then I'll create a new version. So let's run sudo nano resources and then call it again widgets.js. And let's go and get the code. So this time we want the code in widgets-lambda.js. So copy all of the code and then back in the editor here, I'll paste all of this in, confirm, and then we'll save the file. And now we've got the new code for widgets.js. The next thing we need to do is add the following code at the end of the my widget service slash widget service.py file. So let's open this file in nano. So I'll open the file. And if we just go down to the bottom, and we're going to add the code in straight down here at the bottom. So under where you can see this get slash in red. Now copy all of this code, including right the way to the beginning of line 38, because you need the indentation. Let's come back, let's paste that in, confirm. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. So let's save this file. And then the last thing to do is to run CDK deploy again. So let's deploy the update to the application. 
And again, it's going to ask us to confirm. We can see some of the resources that are going to be created here. Let's type Y, press enter, and it's going to go off and do it. And again, it's going to create a CloudFormation change set. So again, we can go back to CloudFormation stacks. Let's just review what's going on here. And here we go, we've got an update in progress. So the My Widget Service stack is being updated. And that has completed successfully. And again, we get this execute URL. So let me just copy this URL and I'm gonna clear my screen and I'm run curl-x get, put in the URL. And again, we get widgets. But this time we have the capability to add and delete widgets as well. So back in this file, you've got the commands here. Essentially we can get, which means obviously retrieve, post is to create, and then get is to retrieve again. So you can then create a widget, call it whatever you want, and then get that widget so you can actually see it in the command line, and then you can go ahead and delete as well. So I'm gonna try running curl, dash x, post, and then I'll give it this URL and then add on my test widget. And so that's created a test widget. Let me rerun the get command. And of course, then I just see widgets and my test widget, but I can actually filter it down to just my test widget as well by adding that into the URL. So that's simply how it works. If I wanted to delete my widget, then I can run curl dash X, delete, put in the URL and then my test widget. That's deleted my widget. And then we can then go and retrieve all widgets. And of course we've only got one left now. So it's quite a simple application to show you how to use the AWS CDK. And before you delete it, I encourage you to go and have a look through CloudFormation, all the resources that were created, have a look through the file system here and edit and open and view some of those files that were part of the deployment toolkit as well, so that you understand the makeup of the different files and what's included in there. Have a look at the resources that were created, like API Gateway and Lambda as well. And then once you're finished, you can terminate this environment. The very last command to run is CDK destroy. And that is simply gonna take everything down. So back in my console, I run CDK destroy, and that should clean up all of my resources by taking out all those free CloudFormation stacks. Mm -hmm.